Hey folks, I'm Tina Hui with Follow the Coin, and we're here with Adam Draper. Adam, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Adam Draper, uh, founder and managing director of Boost VC. Uh, we've accelerated 50 Bitcoin companies in the last two years, and uh, we continue to support it. Um, the goal is the goal is 100 in the next uh, year and a half, and we should be able to hit that. So, why Bitcoin? Uh, I believe that it's the most important uh, revolution for all financial markets of the world, not only the United States. If you're thinking in terms of today's economic climate, like the world is so closely tied together that uh, there needs to be one financial platform that everyone is able to transact on, and Bitcoin is that. So uh, other than that, it's also just cool. It's really, uh, and a lot of the smartest people in the world are working on Bitcoin projects today. So uh, a lot of momentum direction. I've been calling it Bitcoin tsunami. It turns out uh, with a tsunami, 90% of the wave is beneath the water until it hits land. That's sort of how it's feeling right now. We have a lot of uh, people working on very, very interesting projects, building very, very interesting companies. And uh, they're all growing, so they just uh, it's it's going to be a big deal. Speaking of big deals, uh, I understand you're launching a petition today. Uh, yeah, no, I'm launching a petition on change.org. Uh, I recently realized that the uh, second revision of, of, which is a little embarrassing, but I, I recently realized that the second revision of the bid license was released uh, a little while ago, and um, they've been taking uh, modifications and uh, comments over the last, uh, the comment period has actually ended. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that I, 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 it's a really big issue for, for Bitcoin startups, especially where we are at the top of the funnel, where we're uh, the very beginning. Um, it would cost about $2 million by my estimates uh, to actually start a Bitcoin company and get the bit license, uh, which completely hinders innovation for Bitcoin in general. Uh, which is going to be a really big problem um, if this if it passes as it currently stands. There's a lot of uh, redundant rules, like uh, having the collection of information for the federal and the state, uh, as as well as just general costs in, in, in compliance um, hires. There, there's just so many costs and things that go into it. Uh, that I wanted to actually also launch a, um, a, a concept that I wanted to call the uh, sandbox for fintech so that uh, people could actually start something uh, with less money and not have to be fully regulated. Right now, it costs $25 million to start a bank. It might cost $2 million to start a Bitcoin co company. It, might, it already costs $2 million in 18 months to start a brokerage. It, that shouldn't be how it works. You don't know if it's going to work and you're raising all this money from all these different people. I believe that you should have a testing environment. So those are the things that I'm petitioning for. Uh, I, I really just want to get in, in front of uh, the New York Financial Services and make sure that they uh, hear my voice. Well, I really did like the sandbox idea. Um, you know, when you said fintech and Bitcoin and financial technology needs to have a sandbox to play around safely. And in speaking to that, it seems as though the second bit license at least included a little bit of a wiggle room about that in the form of a tentative Bitcoin license for startups. But what what is the gray area? What's yeah, the but the that? super. So uh, what what you're referring to is at the end it says you can get a tentative license before like six months before like something gets approved. Um, but that's at the discretion of the superintendent, which basically means that like the supreme power of the, the New York Financial Services can do whatever they want and that you it's very unclear as to what that would allow um, which I believe that not very many people would get that before going going out and so I, I just wanted to find a way in which it is much more uh, clear that you could have the sandboxing environment no, um, I think that's the, great. yeah so that that's what that's what I'm referring to because the language in itself seems pretty vague because sometimes they said if you have any kind of Interaction with Bitcoin, it's kind of a gray area whether or not you're violating the law or not, right? So, I mean, yeah, well, it is vague. Uh, the, uh, regulators love vagity because they, it's, it keeps it open. So Lots of umbrella it. terms to then kind of act upon, right? Yeah. So, in, you run an accelerator. 
do you, what kind of startups do you see coming through from the Bitcoin side of things? Is it a lot of exchanges? Is it a lot of brokerages? Is this kind of a really big inhibiting factor from the ground level? Oh, from the ground level, this is a huge problem. It impairs the entire like system from the bottom because um, the companies that have gone through the accelerator and are going through the accelerator would be completely, hugely impacted. Companies that have raised $25 million or more, they won't be as impacted because they actually have the money to be able to support this. But if you're uh, a, a college kid who wants to really experiment and thinks that they have a new idea in the space or, um, or someone who's trying to... Just change the financial industry in some way with with Bitcoin because there's a lot of things that we don't know that could be possible with Bitcoin. Um, this this literally requires you not to do anything, not to launch it to the public for uh, it will t- probably take about twelve months to eighteen months and about two million dollars. So I I mean I, I I think it's the most important thing that's happening right now. I think it, New York is about to set a precedent for the rest of the country. There will be other states that will probably compete and want uh, and make, in my opinion, it would be better rules. But a lot of people will look to New York for being the financial hub of the United States uh, for what the rules should be. And so um, I I don't think Bitcoin should be regulated like a bank or a, like it, it should have its own. It is going to have its own thing. It's just a matter of making it possible to, to regulate. I do believe it needs regulation. But with with experimentation is sort of what I'm saying. I, I want I want the companies to be able to try things out, and from my level, that's what we need. We need the ability to try things. Um, yeah, and so I'm I'm just thinking of my my idea of the sandbox was in order to for uh, like 100 200 people uh, be able to experiment on them and try it out, make sure that they know that it's an experiment, that sort of thing. Um, We'll see how far it gets, but I, I'm I'm very excited about it, and I'm optimistic that it might be a big deal. Um, we are and, too. And the, honestly, right now, the most important thing, like as it stands, is the redundancy. Like the fact that there's information collect. Like I have to collect for federal and state there, and then more. I have to collect more for the state. So New York, I don't know why New York is doing this, but they're they're saying like you know, the, the regulatory body for the federal government doesn't do enough or something. They're saying that they're not good enough. It, like, I think if it's good enough for the Fed, it should be good enough for the state in right. this context. Well, there's a lot of conspiracy that there's a lot of lobbying going on from banks and institutional government and that kind of just want to inhibit new startups starting in the space and so that they can have more control. I mean, what are your thoughts on something like that? I mean, I, like, I'm sure there's people lobbying on both sides. Uh, I'm sure the banks have a lot of money. I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't really have anything to say to that. I, I think that, um, I think Bitcoin's coming and it's going to change the way that financial technology works. And I think actually the smartest people are embracing that and they're, and a lot of the bank banks and the um, financial companies are starting to embrace that. I'm getting reached out to by huge institutions um, in order to learn more about Bitcoin and figure out what they can do in order to help Bitcoin. Um, and that, yeah, so I, I, I don't know how hard people are fighting or for it. I, I mean, people are. I know a couple people, a lot of people who are for it, uh, the entire Bitcoin ecosystem. But the, uh, I, I don't know too much about the lobbying efforts. Well, it's interesting because we are also in conversation with a lot of folks too. And in, in the ideal world, what would the bit license look like? More like an SMB that's basic and then gives room for uh, experimenting uh, in addition, like maybe two years instead of six months. Or what does yeah, that look like? I mean, I mean, well, it was so their thing. I would just want it to be possible, even if it was just like making sure that you pass information on to the the superintendent, the um, person who's regulating it. Um, consistently, like, I just think that there should be experimentation and I don't think that this allows for it. Um, and it needs to be cheaper. Like from our perspective, we're, we're investing small amounts of money, uh, for pieces of these companies to jumpstart them. And some of them will be able to pass that barrier of, you know, one, one to $2 million raised. It's just, um, you know, the, you're really screening out a large percentage of Bitcoin innovation by putting a, how much money and hires need to be in existence. Um, it needs to be easier on the companies. That's, 
Because we all. definitely don't see a bunch of people throwing $2 million at each of the startups. Uh, n- n- not today. <laughs> well, I mean, we, I would love that. Yeah, sure. You know, if someone wants to do that, too, that'd be great. But, but it, it also, you know, we're not the only place where Bitcoin startups are emerging. We have, there are startups emerging. All, there are hundreds of startups all over the world that are starting out. And New York's starting this precedent with so much over-regulation. Uh, I just want it to be. I just want it to be easier and cheaper on the companies. That's always the goal. We agree because I mean, who knows when you, New York starts with a stance like this, it could just be U.S. wide, right? And it becomes a battleground. So that's always not a good thing for innovation at all. Completely. So we're really glad you're doing this, Adam. I'm. Uh, I. I'm excited to be doing it as well. I, more for the Bitcoin ecosystem uh, than anything else. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a really big deal, and I think people should be really uh, li- listening and trying to help this thing happen. Thank you, Adam. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye for now.